No Nuremberg Toy Fair in January 2021 because of COVID, so let's go virtual. So this is part two of our look at WSI's new releases in this uh, virtual toy fair of 2021, and I'm with Eric Six again. Hello, Eric. Uh, how can we uh, go forward with uh, the rest of your releases? What's what's first on the on the agenda? Well, like I said uh, the other day in in our part one, so to speak, is that um, this time we focus very much about on trucks and trailers. And uh, we're very delighted to introduce the, the Renault T, which um, we made Renaults before, of course, but there were rally trucks that we developed mainly for the Mammut company. Um, but now, finally, we have uh, a whole range of uh, modern Renault trucks to, to put in front of normal trailers for normal load transport. And, um, we immediately can bring two versions of those because the, the most used um, Renault caps that we see there are the Renault T, which is mounted basically at a normal height and the Renault T high, which has a, a higher mounted cap, which um, allows for a flat floor and, and more um, interior space. Um, but, and, 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 and as you kind of used from us, it, it comes with a whole range of options. So uh, um, all the side skirts, spoiler sets, uh, everything will be available from the start. Um, not only articulated trucks, but also rigids in every axle configuration, um, wheelbase, um, we're, we're flexible in that. Um, and in the near future, we will add on to the, the Renault line up with a normal sleeper cap and also the um, the construction versions so for example they have versions where they have um, a heavier steel bumper um, because if you go off road then and if you might hit something then the the um, um, yeah then there will be less damage etc cetera, etc cetera. so um, yeah that, that's something we're very excited about and and it's Personally, I think it's one of the nicest looking trucks out there. Um, it, it's got a very distinct design, which mm -hmm. uh, kind of combines graciousness with, with a rugged look. So um, yeah, very happy with, uh, with adding that to our, to our tooling bank. And, yes. and, it, it, and it kind of completes the, the, um, the lineup of the seven big brands within WSI. Yeah, it's interesting that, that uh, Renault trucks are coming out from from WSI. One of those sort of things you wonder over the years, actually, why why Renault trucks weren't made. Is was it difficult to get a license, or or is it just that the time is right? A little bit of both, a little yeah. bit of both. Um, but right now the cooperation is very good, um, and and very easy to be honest. Development was was very rapid, um, and uh, no, we're, we're happy with the cooperation. Yeah. What kind of timescales do you think for, for this project? Uh, tooling is done. Um, Pre-production preparations have started. E-sheets are being drawn. So we'll put it into production, let's say, in the next month or so. So Q2, Q3, perhaps? Yeah, let, let's leave it at that and maybe we'll surprise you. What we also have, for example, is adding to our existing tooling bank. In this case, we, we will also make a, a, a current Duff XF sleeper cap, which people could argue, well, that's, that's not really new. Uh, it, it is new for, um, for our, our Duff lineup. And in this case, we've done it basically to, um, to provide a request from our uh, yeah, long-time customers. Uh, We've been working with a lot of transport companies for many years and, and they're like, yeah, but, but we really would like it because you see them. Uh, well, first of all, th there's kind of a revival of the new sleeper cap because it is kind of a, a new hype to do everything old school. And um, the, the show truck guys, they, they like the, the old rugged look. So they're starting to uh, order normal sleeper caps again. That's where a lot of demand came from, and uh, well, we didn't want to say keep saying no to them. Um, and we see them more and more 
when combined with, for example, a knuckle boom crane or a, a hook lift body um, and stuff like that. And to be able to make those and produce those, we thought, okay, we'll, we'll add that to our tooling bank as well. It is in tooling, so I can't show you the, the actual metal sample yet. Yeah, development won't take too long because basically it's, it's adding to our existing tooling. So we don't expect any problems in tooling. And, and that, there's not a lot of sets of tooling required. So we can do that pretty, pretty fast. Another exciting cap, I think, is the Volvo XXL cap, which is actually uh, manufactured not in Sweden, but in Australia. A uh, lot of road trains there. Uh, if you drive from coast to coast, you, you literally live in your cab. And a normal FH cab, although very spacious for Australians, they, they, they like a big bed, for example. And, and this is, <laughs> has a bed that is, um, well, I, I, don't, I don't have it at home. And it's even adjustable. You can, you can put the back up and not in our model, but in real life. Um, and that's something we added to our uh, to our Volvo lineup. Uh, that tooling is fully ready. Model is in production. The first models will be in our premium line in Volvo demo colors, and um, they're not only sold in Australia. They're they're also uh, sold in Europe. So uh, you can expect both your Euro uh, European and Australian versions rather soon. Uh, Next question is, when is that? Um, I'd say in, in about a month or three. Um, so Volvo is kind of Nordic Sweden. What about the, the other big big maker from that part of the world, Scania? Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we also added more, uh, more variation there by adding the whole Scania XT range. And the XT range is the, the the, the more rugged uh, construction type of range that they have. First thing that you will see is is that there's a different beefier bumper that we made. Um, it uh, and it comes with quite a bit of options, like a protection bar. It has uh, optional steps um, underneath. Um, we even made new adapters for the R and the S series. So we can place the, the caps higher onto the chassis, which um, which you will see more in, in like timber trucks and um, and more off road trucks as well. Um, and with the XT line, we will also add uh, chassis with front wheel driven axles. So we could make six by six or eight by eights or uh, and, and yet again, in any configuration, so as, as articulated trucks, as uh, rigid trucks, um, and, and that's something that I personally look forward to because that, that's rather special. That's not been done yet. So, and it's always nice to, to have a novelty like that. Yeah. Guess what my next question is? When? <laughs> well, the Scania XT range is also ready in tooling and um, is about to go into production. Uh, the first two models will be two nice premium line uh, models, uh, five axle tipper rigid and uh, a six by four articulated um, dumper with a three axle half pipe tipper uh, in, in the Scania XT colors. Uh, but we're also putting into production a couple of um, orders for exclusive clients who already placed an order. I would say in, in about five months. Okay, so that was new from Scania, but uh, I think you've got something else also from Volvo. Yes, it's, um, it's busy in Sweden. Uh, Volvo introduced the, the successor of the um, FH, of course, and that's a tooling we've been working on uh, quite a bit of time, and it's actually been finished for quite a while. It was one of those projects that was affected by Corona and, and was halted uh, due to that. Um, it's, uh, it's ready to go into production. And uh, we made the full range of caps. So we have a sleeper cap with the Globetrotter, the Globetrotter XL. And we also added the, the XXL version, uh, which is exciting. Um, and now we also have the, the heavier bumper we see on a lot of heavy haulage models, tipper trucks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
and and that's something that's um, yeah that f- for us that's an important truck of course because uh, it's it's a major brand and we do a lot of Volvos so we're we're excited to to bring that to you. Um, we will definitely add more to that because there's a whole new FM generation and an FMX generation. Um, that's not something we can introduce just yet, but it's around the corner. In the works. Okay, and the and the time scale for these whole new Volvos? Well, like I said, the whole FH, uh, the tooling was finished quite a bit ago, so okay. they're in production. Um, well, let, let, let's say, keep an eye on our website. We looked at uh, not only the, the, the truck makes, um, but also what we can provide on bodies that we have. And uh, so, for example, we have a flat body for our knuckle boom cranes, which is a, a, a very nice 20 foot flat body. However, that said, uh, there's a lot of those combinations around because you see them in agricultural transport, in uh, construction equipment transport, um, big crates, y- you name it, and, and they're out there. And we didn't really have a suitable body for either the truck or the drawbar trailer. So uh, we made a fully die-cast new uh, flat body basically, or flat bed body, however you want to put it, uh, plus all kinds of drawbar trailers. So we have a conventional steer drawbar trailer, but also mid-axle drawbar trailers. Um, and uh, and the first couple of um, models that we'll produce are, are, if I say so myself, of show truck quality. Um, mm. that, that there will be some models from your neck of the woods, which will be very exciting, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think it's a nice addition because up to now we've we have done some resin bodies in in um, f- for those flat bodies, and those turned out very nicely. However, l- like with the LTM 1500 jib, we we see that if you have a, a real die cast product, first of all, the acceptance rate is better. But also in development, you, you can achieve a lot more with die-cast metal because it's it's simply stronger, so I can build the body lower, I can build it more accurately. I think it's a nice addition to uh, to have that um, have that as well. Okay. And it allows for making nice loads as well. So, and, and in that regard, there's there's some surprises uh, for for let's say Q3 and Q4, which I will keep on the reps for now. Okay. Next. <laughs> Next. Um, Iveco S-Way. Uh, and, um, and quite a vast range of it. We saw that with Iveco, when they introduced the S-Way, the, the design was pretty revolutionary. It's, it's very recognizable on the roads. And, uh, and we see that they are getting more and more popular. If you see the um, the market share they have, it's it's definitely on the on the rise. Um, so well worth uh, um, investing in in the new S way, and will not only produce the, the normal cab, will also produce a sleeper cab, a normal sleeper cab. Um, we have loads of options. We have two different bumpers. We have all kinds of spoiler sets. Uh, yet again, we, we can do articulated trucks, um, rigid, whatever. Um, and it's the first truck we really uh, um, developed all the um, the natural, they, they call it natural product. Right now, it's not only diesel on the roads anymore, right? We've got LNG, for example, natural gas, uh, and those have different kind of chassis accessories. Like the, the, the fuel tanks look completely different on an LNG um, truck than a normal diesel tank. Uh, and that, that's something like CNG, LNG, uh, all those accessories are, uh, are included as well so that we can make it with an actual tooling and, and also not only, yeah, also bring those models in, into kind of the, the new, more sustainable lifestyle that we, I think, all want to achieve. Yes, I understand. Uh, when? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we're, we're aiming for Q3. Okay. Q3 is going to be busy. <laughs> people need to, busy. People yes. need to start saving up. Another thing we will add is in the um, in the container transport sector. We've had uh, container trailers since basically from the start of WSI with a, a Flex Excel trailer. We added um, a two connect trailer later. Uh, we have a classic container trailer. So we had a vast range already. What we didn't have was um, container bodies for rigids. And that's something we added. Uh, of course, if you have a container body for a rigid, you need a drawbar trailer. And, and um, the drawbar trailer that we made is highly flexible. So we can make two axles, three axles, four axles even, widespread, narrow spread. And not only in modern versions, but yet again also in uh, for the classic trucks. Uh, and that will be nice because um, we have quite a bit of classic trucks in our tooling bank. That said, we didn't have enough trailer and and bodies to to combine with them. And th that's something we we will definitely um, put more focus onto as well. So. Uh, the, the container pro uh, body project is is one of the first where that will be shown. I'm always um, uh, wondering about one, one thing. It's not something you can do anything about, but um, all the manufacturers make containers and they're yes. all ever so slightly different, which is very annoying yeah. for a collector. So you, you get a container from one manufacturer and you can't quite put it on a trailer from another. So, uh, but that's that's not a problem you can fix, I don't think, but uh, there we are. There we are. <laughs> yeah, and then last but not least, uh, happy to announce that we will renew our cooperation with uh, Shorla and the TII group. Huh. Um, of course, we already had the, the Intercombi lineup, and that will be renewed and reactivated. Um, and that's something we're happy about. Uh, and not only that, there's actually a new tooling there to be introduced as well, because um, we added an Intercombi SPE, which is kind of a similar uh, uh, type of machine as an SPMT. So the, the Intercombi modules are road-going vehicle, vehicles, and they're, um, they, they have a, a steering that goes up to a certain angle, but the SPE actually has uh, fully rotating axles, independent, so they they could move sideways, they can move crab-like, they can uh, rotate, and they're completely uh, compatible with the intercombi models. Um, it's self-propelled, and we also developed a, a completely new PPU power unit for it, which is a lot larger than the, the power booster unit we had for the normal intercombis. Um, and that tooling has already been finished. Uh, I. To, to answer your next question, when that, that might be Q2, um, and and yeah, that, that's that's exciting to to make a new uh, yeah a, a renewal of that cooperation, um, and, uh, and and hopefully there will be some more news to come in in the not too distant future. Yeah, that certainly sounds like um, good news for anyone interested in those kind of vehicles because. Uh, uh, they're obviously both they're interesting um you, you can produce some kind of interesting displays with them if that's what you want to do and obviously it's good for you to to renew that relationship as well so that all sounds very good yeah and they're highly flexible of course you, you can make a, a fairly small low loader you can make a, a vast uh modular trailer for i don't know two thousand tons and, yes. and everything in between so yeah that, that's nice uh, Eric, that, is that, is that, I assume that's it? That, that's, well, yeah, for now. Let, let, let's say for, for this virtual toy fair, that's it. Um, is, is there more news to come in, uh, in let's say the second half of the year and, and especially in 22, uh, as, as you said? Yeah, most definitely. So we, we might need to revisit this in, let's say September or something. Yeah. Well, uh, look, thanks very much for your time, Eric. Um, it's been a, uh, I think interesting to, to hear what you've got coming and um, impressive too because uh, that's a long shopping list of things that you've uh, you've been able to announce.
they, they keep me busy, which is which is a good thing nowadays, right? Yeah, good to hear. good good to see you. Thanks very much. Thank you, Ian. Bye bye. Bye.